Gentlemen, without a profound understanding of Goethe's life and times, you will be unable to grasp the development of German Romanticism in the 19th century. Today we will be studying Goethe Gedichte. Mr. Schrenk, I'd like that note you have here on the instant. Swavia Club, Dionysus, duel tonight in Otto's Grotter. Be there or be square. What? How many times must I tell you boys that these clubs of yours are illegal? I'm gonna have to report this to the headmaster. Go sit in the dunce stool. Mr. Arnold, I'll be stopping by later today to see you and your father. Your behavior has not changed since our last meeting. Yeah, I'm gonna be busted for that one. Hey, hey. So, the club meets tonight in the garden cave behind my house. Oh man, my kid sister's having a birthday party and all my aunts are coming. I'll not never let you sure. go. Make sure to save you a cupcake. Oh, yeah. Cupcake. Okay. Nice hat. <laughs> Maybe. She'll let you play with the tea set. Whoa! Oh! oh. No. Never! Oh, my God. Oh, oh. oh. They just made a new entrance test. You have to drink at least as many pints as one of the five committee members. My brother outdoes them all. He can do at least 20 sure. pints. Listen, I've got to get going. What's the password tonight? The password. password. Dionysus. 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 Cross your swords. Ready. Fix. Okay. Oh, right. 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 Come on, 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 come Trying to smoke us out of here? <laughs> I snuck a bomb. My father's just brandy from the cellar. He'll think when the servants stuck it. Good one. <laughs> Nothing will be drunk until the club has been brought to order. So what are we waiting for? Is everyone assembled? 
Just messing, Kurt. <laughs> I hereby reconvene Club Suavia. I will now read the traditional opening message. I come to this place because I want to live deliberately. I want to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life. I'll second that. To put to rout all that is not life. And not when I've come to die, discover that I've not lived. Yeah. 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 Mr. Arnold, we will now report our club standing. Disgrace. In the first action alone, we lost three points for improper presentation. Thanks to Paul. My foil was broken. We could have borrowed someone else's. Our next engagement is on Friday the 13th with the Skulls. Bad luck. For them, you mean. Hey, pass it on. Okay, story. Yeah. Okay, this is no story, but it's something I've been meaning to tell you guys for a long time. I am no German. My father's the Russian czar. You're joking. I'm not. I'm serious. He wanted me to have a better education than what he could give me in Russia, so he sent me here until I'm old enough to click in my reign. And so I wouldn't be too conspicuous among you, he gave me the simple German name, Knopf. You're full of it. Here's one. It's a dark and rainy night. And it's all that you had a passion for jigsaw puzzles. But as she sat by herself in the center of her room, she realized that it was her very own room. And in the center of the puzzle was herself. And in the center of the puzzle was herself. In the menge Mecki Messer, dem man nichts fragt und der nichts weiß und die minderjährige Witwe, deren Namen jeder weiß. What time is it? It must be 10 30. I'm gonna catch it. Come on, Otto. Get up. Come on. Have a heart. Come on. I feel sick. I heard it helps eat raw, raw herring. Let's ask someone. What's wrong with you boys? Don't you know what time it is? You mistakenly had some wine and flaws of juice. Why, you're drunk, you ruffians. Get to your homes immediately or I'll have to law on you. Okay. Father's waiting for you. Enter. Your actions have been a disgrace to our family name. Have you given any thought to your mother and me and my position at the university? I'm sorry, Father. You're sorry? That's wonderful you're sorry. Don't you realize that you're wasting your life? You've got the intellectual curiosity of an ant. All you care for is the foolishness of people beneath you, beneath us, and our family's noble heritage. Papa, I do have interest. If you want to talk about going to medical school again, you can forget about it. 
once you've gotten your doctorate in theology, you can do as you please. But until then, you listen to me. Yes, Papa. You must be punished. I have arranged for you to spend some weeks with Uncle Pastor Khan. Perhaps he may succeed or I have failed. Go now and collect your belongings. Your train leaves in one hour. We are not many, but we are here. And I hope the word of God blesses us all richly this morning. Before I begin, allow me to address the situation which causes the attendance here to be so small. I know I have offended many in this congregation with my statements confronting the impropriety and outright sin with which our choir master, Avendroth, was involved in. I am afraid I am unable to apologize for these statements and will continue in love to represent the word of my Lord Jesus in this church or wherever I am placed. This morning, I would like to speak on the theme of the compassion of the Lord. I will begin by reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 44. Not exactly. Let me see. Oh, Carl Lai. I guess you can find a message in that. I used to read it when I was a child. So you've been sent down to the country for misbehavior, have you? My father says I've disgraced his name. Could be worse. I'm sorry I hurt them, but I honestly don't know how to please them. Please them? Have you ever thought about pleasing God? Isn't that why we go to church? Church is part of it. If only I could be like Coral Mai, who's religious without losing his freedom, and my father's so miserable. Reading the Bible only makes him sadder. There's nothing miserable about following Jesus. It's the most victorious way I know. Anyway, I've invited a friend from the Salvation Army to dinner tonight. I want you to listen carefully. Aren't those men kind of dirty? Wait and see. So where do we go from here? The weavers tell me they're being pushed out of business by the big city factories. They can hardly feed their children. Can I pass anyone the potatoes? What do your superior say? They feel very attacked. Pastor Bonhoff came to me very indignantly and asked me what kind of rabble-rousing I was getting into. Then he piously reminded me of the many ways the church helps the poor already. I almost laughed in his face. Some people aren't reading the same Bible I am. We, I say we help them do their job by taking a cut of the Sunday collection for food distribution. Like Robin Hood? That's an option, but remember, brother, food is only part of the equation. But an important part. Will you pass me the sausage, please? Oh. Did I tell you about the meeting we have Tuesday night? Not yet. We were around 30 people. Most I've never seen before. We talked about the Beatitudes. I'm telling you, brother, it means something new when you read it. Blessed are the poor in hearts with down and out. Sure, I know many of them will be back in the bottle tomorrow. But you just can't shake the feeling that these are the people Jesus would come to tomorrow. We were so happy at the end, singing and shouting. We could hardly close the meeting. 
I'd love to join you next time. You're welcome anytime. With anyone else who cared to come? We might just do that. I just don't know what to do about my own congregation. It's almost like they don't want anything new. Aaron, do you have potato on your collar? Oh, what a waste. <laughs> May I please be excused? Still reading, huh? Everything's so new. It's a living word after all. So, Abbo, you leave tomorrow? May God be with you. Good night. Good night, Uncle Ernst. Thanks Thank for coming. You. Christian, and I want to be one. You see, Uncle Ernst? Maybe this evening. Oh, goodness. I forgot to tell Cook to my fish for dinner tonight. Your father's sick and softer. Afternoon. Could you spare some food or some change? I have a long way to walk still today. Will you sit down? So where are you going? To the next town and the next one after that. What work do you do? As little as possible. I don't have any money, but there's a sack of potatoes in the kitchen which you can have. We'll never manage all of them. Anything you can manage. Here, why don't you take my hat? Yours looks pretty old. Thanks. <laughs> it must be fun walking from place to place. Yeah, it's pretty fun if you don't mind getting rained upon some of the time. Are you poor? I would say so. Have you heard about Jesus? Tell me. Everhart, come here this instant. What's wrong, Mother? What kind of cap are you wearing? Go inside at once. I'm coming right away. I'm sorry, such a stupid boy. Come on, let me see your hair. Did you really cut it all off? Forget about it. How was I supposed to know his hat and lice in it? It itches like crazy. Keep telling me about your uncle. Is the whole village really mad at him? Almost everybody. The church was more than three quarters empty. You mean the choir director was messing with their daughters and they took his side? Uncle Ernst was a plight about it. He raised a huge stick and made the man leave the next day. Unbelievable. Do you know what he actually did? I didn't bother to find out, but it must have been bad. But that's only part of what he's been doing. He says we should do what Jesus says about giving to the poor. 
These people have nothing, Paul. Uncle Ernst says you wouldn't believe how many rich Christians just ignore them. I'm telling you, Paul, we should get the boys together and talk about it. Maybe we should start a Jesus Club or something. Yeah. Oh, wait. There she is. Just beautiful. Have you ever seen anything more heavenly? Never. Gotta go. to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life. What do you make of the new art exhibition at Rembrandt's Hall? Oh, it is wonderful. Much too modern for me. Oh, you can't even make out the form of the goddess anymore. The beautiful women, though, it's just, what, what grace. Germany Come has it. been going downhill since Kaiser Wilhelm II took over. The intellectual depth for fine art is going to the dogs. I lost a packet on that last race. Ryan Roy, who knew Pip? The Philly von Bismarck was looking hopeful till the last oh, length, where she winded. Damn it, that's 500 marks down between. Herr Oberlin. You've got a stall full of fat and lazy horses. I wish you luck in the new year. That's about it. Better luck racing donkeys. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's simply impossible to get good help these days. 
I just had to let my new girl go. She was forever breaking dishes. Such a strain. Well, I must say, we have been blessed. I haven't had to speak to Trottle once, except a month ago when she burned a cake. Could you give me any recommendations? I could talk to a few people I know and see. Mother, I need to speak to you. Say good evening to Frau Winter. Good evening, Frau Winter. Mother, please listen. Now, Ebo. Honored guests, as the old year draws their close and we prepare our hearts for the new year, I wish you all success and happiness in everything. And may the year of our Lord, 1899, bring peace and prosperity to our German nation. Yeah. This evening, I met Jesus for the first time. He forgave my sins and called me to a new life. I wish the same for everyone in this room, that they find the same joy in new life. People so completely changed. They're dancing in the streets. And there's meetings almost every evening at different houses. I'm surprised I didn't hear about it in Salt's Vadel. What do Papa and Mama say? Oh, Mama can't understand what it's all about. She says we're just foolish girls. The worst is Olga. She's been a real grouch and complains to Papa that it's nothing but emotional nonsense misleading young people. She just says that because that's what Pastor Hobbing thinks. So when did this first start? I first heard about it a few weeks ago when some of the students from the university started putting up posters on a lecture series. That'd be Von Gertel. Von Gertel spoke on the living Christ. Every evening the theater was packed. Everyone who went started realizing that Jesus really meant what he said in the Bible. And so many of the things we assumed until now were completely wrong. Some people are even saying the church is wrong about baptizing babies. That went over real well with Mama. So when's the next meeting? Tonight at Frau Bear's. I was going to ask Mama if it was all right for all of us to go. One of the students is going to speak. So how's work? Intense. There's been an epidemic of typhoid. The guests will be arriving soon. Would you like to set up the chairs? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. 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 This evening will also be wonderful. One of the theology students, Mr. Arnold, will be speaking. Make yourselves at home. Mr. Arnold, is everything ready? Yes, everything's ready. Will everyone kindly find a chair? I think we are ready to begin. Many of you will have already met Mr. Arnold. As a leading member of the student Christian movement, we can also thank him for helping to arrange the recent lectures. Good to see you all. Tonight I want to speak from the 10th chapter in Hebrews. These words need no introduction. May they speak powerfully into all our hearts. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, 
but let us encourage one another, and all the more as we see the day approaching. That was powerful. So it's such a promise. Whoever looks in faith at Jesus on the cross is healed at the same moment. I've never experienced anything like it. See you. Good night. And you too. Right. I want to see you tomorrow. Yep. That's great. Might have the honor of escorting you home tonight. Thank you, and thank you for the meeting, but I'm sure we'll be fine. Our brother Heinz promised to meet us at the corner. Will I see you tomorrow at the meeting? If our parents allow it, we will. Thank you, and good evening. Might have the honor of escorting you home tomorrow night. I would be honored as well. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Why, it's young Herr Arnold. Perhaps he forgot something last night. Good morning, Frau Bear. You wouldn't believe what just happened. After last night's meeting, I walked Emmy von Hollander home. I've never had such a happier moment in my whole life. Wonderful. She's a noble girl and a strong young lady. Very upright with fine taste. Frau Bear, you must keep my secret. After a whole night of prayer, God has given me the certainty that she should be my bride. I've been praying that you would find the right partner. I'm so happy for you. Where can I find the finest roses? I'm going right away to ask her father if I can be betrothed there. You might find you rather abrupt, but follow your heart. Try Adelheid's on the next street over. I'm on my way. All the best. And what did he say to you? Mind your own business, Mimi. Emshin is permitted to keep her own conversation private. But why would he walk her home if he didn't have something to say? Mimi, after all these meetings we've had, there's no lack of things to talk about. Isn't that him? Shh. Where? Oh. He's going to our house. Emmy, what's going on? I don't really know. Come. So, you want to correspond with my daughter? Yes, I do. But not only that, I'd like to become engaged to her today. What? That is impossible. I hardly know you or your family. I don't even know what your parents think. My parents trust me to choose the one meant by God. She's told me about you. She says you've lived a clean life. It's not that I'm totally against it, but these things take time. Please, sir, might I have the privilege of speaking with your daughter alone? I suppose so, but I will only agree to engagement when I hear what your parents think. I'll see if her mother can find her. Emmy, there you are. This young man would like to speak to you. Thank you, Father. My beloved Abba, this evening I'm going to read the last two little volumes you gave me. I love it so much that you always place Jesus so clearly in the center. I still wanted to speak with you about this today, but the time was too short. I also wanted to tell you what Elsa and I have been thinking about the question of baptism. However, this would take too long, and then my letter wouldn't reach you tomorrow. Or at least that's what I'm afraid of. 
so I better stop now. Please greet your family very, very warmly from me and tell them we are both terribly happy. United forever in the Lord our Savior, your warmly loving Emmy. How can you do this to me? How can you do this to your father? I'm only trying to do what I read in the Bible, Mama. It is blasphemy! How dare you even mention such an idea in this house? Who has been misleading you? Is it this Emma Hart Arnold? Mama, please be calm, Mama. If it is in accordance with God's word, how could it be wrong? You as well? Let me be clear, young ladies. What you are talking about now is serious sin, and I will not tolerate it in this house. If you, Elza, decide to become baptized, you can no longer remain in this house. I must obey God more than you, Mama. You know what you are doing to me? I had no idea you were as crazy as this. I thought it was just a fad. But baptism? You'll be cut off from the church, where our parents and grandparents, our whole family, has served for generations. You despise all of it. You treat me like dirt. I will kill myself if you're rebaptized. Mama. Mama! My dearest Emmy, there is so much that moves me today that I don't know I'll ever end this letter. And I thank Jesus for the fact that you and Elsa have decided to do God's will in all circumstances, insofar as you understand his word. True rebirth can never be without this kind of decisiveness. I am moved that the issue of baptism is confronting you so seriously. I pray urgently that God and no one else leads you, your warmly loving Ebba. Elsa, where have you been? I thought Papa locked you in your room. He did. I even heard the key in the lock. I was just sitting there looking out the window toward the Zala, and I saw a rainbow over it, and I knew there was a baptism happening. So I tried the door, and it was open. How could it? And I went down to the river and was baptized. Papa met me on the way back. What did he say? Nothing. He and Olga were just walking, and I walked right past them as I am now, as if they were blind and couldn't see me. Now the fight begins. God will take care of us. Ebo has just written. He says he is now firmly convinced that infant baptism is invalid based on Jesus' words in the gospel. He says, I regard myself as unbaptized and declare war on the existing church system. I feel the same. Sister. His parents and ours will reject us. I'm sure of it. They won't let us marry for a long time. I doubt the university will even let him take his exams, but I can see no other way. to Erlangen, you must leave now. Erlangen, tonight? Tomorrow morning I have my oral examination at the university. Theology? They wouldn't let me take the exam after I got baptized, so I switched to philosophy, and with a passing grade, I won a prize. A teaching position? Much greater than that, the hand of my betrothed. The train leaves on the half hour. Godspeed, Mr. Arnold, and may the prize be yours. Good night.
Excuse me. Yes? A telegram has just arrived. Er yes. Langen. To Emmy von Hollander. Thank you. Papa, Mama! What is it, Charles? A telegram from Evo. Summa cum laude, Doctor of Philosophy, Ebo. Wow. Emmy! Mama! Then your wedding will be soon! Sing exulting, my beloved. Radiate your joy to all. Joy, pure joy, is what Christ offers. All our sorrows are no more. Soon I shall again be gazing deep into your lovely eyes. Soon I shall once more be with you. Greater joy could not be mine. Only days keep us apart now. My life's deepest joy and bless. Then you'll walk along beside me and return my every kiss. We're off the fence. Thanks for your service, man. We fight for the fatherland. The fatherland. Thank you, sweetheart. We lay down our lives for the beautiful girls of Germany. Fritz! Dr. Arnold. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Fritz, you haven't been at the last meetings. Is everything all right? Yes, we've been in training. We're on our way to teach the frogs how to hop. <laughs> our train leaves for the front in two hours. My prayers will be with you. God will be with us. The Kaiser's leading us back to the glory of Bismarck, Germany. Blood and iron, Dr. Arnold. I've been reading your book about war and inner life. Wonderful. It's given me a lot to think about. Before, I was excited to fight for my family and friends. But now, I see Germany's historic mission is much greater than that. I tremble before the great task. We live in a serious hour, my young friend. Have you signed up as well? I've enlisted, but I'm waiting to be dispatched. We have a train to catch, Dr. Arnold. Pray for us and for Germany. <laughs> Elza. She's still at the office finishing up some stuff. She'll be back by dinner. I'm telling you, Emmy, we couldn't survive without her. She's always been loyal. Ever since our wedding. Soon it'll be six years. So how's the article coming? Slowly. The next issue of the fur trade is going to be sent out next week. Is the other work piling up? It's endless. We're working on a book of quotations from Luther uh, and a number of booklets for the soldiers. Can I get you anything? How much food do we have left? Barely enough to make it through next week, but the quality is so poor. I'm worried for them if the rationing goes on much longer. Come here, Heidi. How was your day? Good. Okay. okay, I'm gonna tell you the story of the three little bears, but first wash your face for supper.
You see so much despair in people's faces, especially from the soldiers who come back from the front. Thank God they never saw action. Thank God they only kept you three weeks, Ebo. It makes me wonder if God really does favor any nation in the war. I no longer believe a Christian can go to the war. We should proclaim it in our printings and teach it to our children. Will you be going to the hospital tonight? I promised one of the men I'd be there. You remember Fritz? Mushka? Let me see his leg. There's no circulation. It will have to come off below the knee. We should fit it in tonight if the light holds out. Put bed 27 down for a left BKA. Good evening. Doctor O'Connor. Don't worry. I need water. I need water. Fritz! Dr. Arnold, you came. I gave you my word. You should spend some time with Lushka. He just got some bad news. How's the rest of them all? Angry. Fed up with the poor treatment and war. So, what were you going to tell me? I wanted to show you this. It was that morning at the morn. And they came over the bar wire. It was hand to hand with bayonets. And this man came down in the trench. I seen his face when it was light enough. I see his face every night in my dreams. War is over! Germany is defeated! Germany is defeated! The, and the Kaiser has fled to Holland! The war is over! Germany is defeated! Have you heard about the conditions of peace? I thought President Wilson was putting forth a proposal. Are you kidding? England and France won't stand for anything less than complete humiliation. Fears an a la kaput. We better get out of here before the fighting starts. Good afternoon, Dr. Arnold. Good afternoon. The street's been quiet? Um, there's a ceasefire agreement until Wednesday. Good. A life of discipleship can be achieved only when the thoughts, feelings, and the actions of Jesus well up from deep within us into our outward lives. 
When his spirit leads and motivates us, we feel and respond just as he does to the distress of our fellow men. Only those who actively step in and give a needy friend whatever they have are following in the steps of Jesus. For that was the very essence of Jesus. He gave up everything he possessed. Everybody at the floor now! <laughs> It is hard to describe the revolution of 1918 and 1919. People had been certain that the war would be short and that we would win. Now all the pent up suffering and hatred of the oppressed erupted. They had seen enough. There were sharpshooting, brother against brother. That's the most unusual style, Dr. Arnold. I also found it quite distasteful at first, but now I'm finding it quite endearing. Thank you. Is this how you normally entertain, Dr. Arnold? We try to have an open evening twice a week for anyone who wants an alternative of life. Most unusual. I'm glad about your phone call. Could you explain a bit more about it? Certainly, Dr. Arnold. As you are aware, the former director of agriculture, Cap, is now leading the government. Yes, of course. He has directed me to request that you join with us and take on the Department of Youth and the new administration. I'm greatly honored he thinks of me. I'll have my secretary forward the necessary papers. I'm afraid I'll have to decline. You see, Emmy and I have been examining our lives since the war ended. We're beginning to realize the life what Jesus meant for his followers is totally different from the government in modern society. What do you have in mind? We're not really sure what it will mean. Abo, I think we're ready to gather now. Lieutenant, you're welcome to join us. I'm afraid I have other obligations. Well, goodbye. You're welcome back anytime. I give my best regards to Hair Cap. Have a good night. Good night. Who's all here? There's a number from the Van der Vogel, a few from the student Christian movement, a girl from the Communist Party, pretty much the whole gamut. I'll start with Matthew 5 through 8, the Beatitudes, and then the rest of the Sermon on the Mount. Remember to announce the dates of the conference in Schlustern. Oh yes, of course, it's the Whitson weekend. Over 100 young people came from all over Germany. It was a pretty mixed up group. Members of the Student Christian Movement, Von der Vogel, and Free German Youth. You look pretty old. Older than you? Then I can beat you in a race. Do you think so? Yeah. Where to? Oh, uh, that trio. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Get set. Yeah, I should have told you I'm only 22 years old. The 
The dress and styles were opposite of social norms. Many went barefoot, wearing simple colorful frocks and shorts. The girls wore garlands on their heads. But it's simply a fact that clothes are our invention of the same culture which promotes war and degradation. Look to what extreme people go to follow the fashions that change with the seasons. We need to finally rip off all of our coverings. Over to the air. Good fun. Go win. Then we'll be real people. We're dealing here with the differences between heathendom and Christianity. There were people from all extremes, ranging from romantics to students whose heads were filled with every imaginable political, economic, religious, and historical problem. But all these living people were standing in the same tense expectation that something new had to come, a new birth from quite another world. You remind me of Chernyshevsky. Only when we have been thoroughly purged of the pollution of history can the new mankind awake. Then we began folk dancing and danced almost without a break until 10 o'clock. Nature is the source of wisdom. Herr Professor Acorn, what is the meaning of philosophy? See, nothing at all. You got too many ants in your pants. That was sacred. That was sacred. Then came the most beautiful part of the evening, the great big fire. As it flared high, we joined heads and let the fire, the holy fire, soak into us. Flame. Free us from everything in us that is evil. Flame, let your glow fill our souls and consume us. Thou flame, make us free, pure, and good. Brothers and sisters, we have experienced great things in our time together. And now the future beckons us. How will we respond? With Jesus, there is no compromise. Whoever wants to belong to his kingdom must go the whole way and go through with it to the last. If we believe this kingdom is approaching, if we are sure the transformation of all living things will be the last word in earthly history, then let us live now in accordance with the spirit of the future. Jesus tells us clearly, true faith proves itself in action. To serve God means not rest, but work. God does not want words and outward show, but deeds and truth. Jesus said, he who wants to follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Therefore, let us not deceive ourselves, not our words and feelings but the proof of our deeds show the state of our faith. This faith is not a feeling, not a process. It is an act. Up to the act of faith, up to active obedience. There is only one thing that knows no conditions. That is love. There is only one absolute. That is God. There is only one direct way. That is the experience of God's love in Jesus Christ. God is love. In Christ, his love is put into practice. Come, let us be up and doing. Now is the time. <laughs>